This Thursday through Saturday at Kohl's, it's time to spread the holiday cheer. So whip up some cookies with a KitchenAid Artisan Stand Mixer, just $2.99.99 after mail-in rebate. Save the world with Mr. Potato Head Marvel Super Heroes for $29.99. And make her eyes light up with a Swarovski ring, just $21.99. At Kohl's, you'll save a little more with an extra 20% off and earn a little more with Kohl's Cash. So you can give a little more this holiday. Kohl's. Select styles offer valid 12 one through 12 5 Some exclusions apply. See store or kohls.com for details. Blog Talk Radio. Contra Radio Network presents the Roundtable Report, a discussion of today's issues. So the kip gloves are off as we listen to real answers from real people. Come and join us on the Roundtable Report. And good evening. Happy Thanksgiving Eve to you and yours. I'm John Jeffers here at the Contra Radio Network with my co-host Terry from the beautiful state of Missouri. Say hi. Hi to everybody. There there he is. Hey, tonight in about about, uh, 10 minutes, uh, author John Theo Jr. is going to call in. He just released his fourth novel, and he got a hold of me by email and says, hey, can I come on your show? I said, sure. Love to have you. Just let me know. You know what your availability is? He says, "How about this Wednesday?" I said, "Okay, that works for me." So I'll be calling in about eight ten. And before we get there, I want to say something to you, and I want you all to think about this very carefully and very seriously. The left is trying to pressure the electoral delegates into changing their vote. Now, remember, electoral delegates are only bound by law in, a, you know, in probably what, 20, 27 states to vote the way the will of the people voted for the state and during the election. However, the Trump delegates are getting death threats if they don't change their vote. Some are starting to waver. Now, what I want you to do is this. Find out who your electors are in your state. If your state went for Trump, great. Here in the People's Tyranny Republic of Illinois, again, once again, Chicago swayed the vote. And unfortunately, it went to Hillary. However, what I'm asking is this. Get all your electors, and your, your state went for Trump in the election. Get all your electors. Tell them you got their back. Because right now, they're facing death threats from all over. Now, apparently, they're trying to change the electoral results. They want Hillary to demand a recount in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and uh, Wisconsin. Um under what terms, I don't know. Guest 1786 and guest 1791 have logged in the chat room. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. So get all the delegates. Tell them you got their back. Uh, I know Oath Keepers, and I'm not a member of Oath Keepers, but I did see it posted. Uh, they are offering their protection to the electors before they go to the Electoral College. However, so that's then. That's how I put it out there then. Okay. We'll go from there. We'll see what happens. Now, John Theo Jr., our guest coming on in about, I don't know, what time is it, Terry? About, on about, uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, about six minutes. He'll be, he'll be calling in about six minutes. He write, he's a, uh, he teaches screenwriting and whatnot at a local junior college in Massachusetts. I have not read his book. I said, this was just a literally last week. I haven't a chance to read his book or that whatnot. So you have to forgive me for not being able to keep up with him. But I'm sure he's going to come on and talk to us. Now, afterwards, Terry, you're going to like this. After we're done with talking about his book, he taught, he does a lot of uh, talking and with religion. And I asked him, I said, a lot of churches, a lot of churches don't like prepping. So I asked him, I said, hey, Let's talk about how prepping fits in with God's plan. Because like I said, we have a lot of, I don't should say we have a lot, but many churches will sit there and they say that prepping takes the focus off of Jesus and God. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, there's plenty of uh, parables and whatnot within the Bible that tell us to prepare. I see Porky Wheel's in from Northern Ireland in the chat room. Welcome, Porky Wheel. Uh, we're getting ready for Turkey Day here tomorrow. Well, you know, we here in the Cos household, we we don't have any plans really. This year, 
everybody is doing something completely different, and it's like everybody's just off to the wind. Um, and we just don't have any plans. Just my wife and I and my son. You're going. You're going to Taco Bell. I know better. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> The turkey, the turkey day. grande. <laughs> mm-hmm. And no, afterwards, I, uh, you can spend all day in the bathroom. Personally, I suggested that. How about this year we just go to a restaurant? My son's a lot like, of people really? A lot of yeah, I know, that. but not, not, not here. We, uh, we. Now, one time, a years, like ten years ago, my my son was gone seeing family. Right. And my my stepdad was gone in Texas hunting. So it was just and my mom was alone and I took my wife and I took my mom out to a uh, Christmas dinner. Mm-hmm. At Ryan's, I believe it was. But, I love um, Ryan's. Yeah. Oh, here All you can it, eat, it, baby. Here, I don't know why, but it it went downhill in about a year's <laughs> time. I I don't know what happened, but it just it was doing great, and then it went downhill, and then it now and then they sold it. They moved out. Real, wow. And we're outside of a military base too. Oh, that reminds me, listeners. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I am thankful for the listeners of CRN, and I'm going to tell you why right now. You know why? We have over eighteen thousand listeners in the last thirty days. Eighteen thousand. We have over 120,000 downloads of our show. I want to say thank you. You know, I'm humbled by that. So by all means. Um, also, if you check on the uh, uh, CRN Facebook page, I posted a picture there, and I entitled it, What's Wrong With This Picture? And uh, Austin Lehman out in California, he picked up on it within 30 seconds. So he gets a gold star today. And if you want to take a look at it, you'll see why. Now, I can only tell you about the picture was posted, was taken in 2012. I do not know by who or where, but when you take a look at it, you'll get the message real quick. But I, won't, I just, you know, put it out there. And the reason I put it out there is if, if you can't identify what's wrong with the picture, that's okay. But I want you to be able to recognize a bad idea, a dangerous situation. If you can't recognize it in a photograph, how are you going to recognize it when it's happening right in front of you? Okay? Not criticizing. I'm putting it out there for your safety and edification. Dun, dun. And what, wait a minute. What kind of photograph is this? You'll see it. You scroll down. Oh, you can't miss it. You should be able to pick it up right away. It's on a Contra Radio Facebook page. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is. I just happen to have that. Well, uh, you should so have I'm, it all the time. All the time. I I'm, post nothing but good information for our listeners. <laughs> good just, information. No. You, you mean the AR-15? Or no, oh, the picture, going. the women. Yeah. The uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, what's I'm wrong not, with this picture? What is wrong with it? And if you look, the guy in the middle row, it looks like he's covering down on on the woman right in front of him. It's like, no. And then I looked at more and I said, no. And that's a gun safety class. That was a gun safety. That was taken at a gun safety class in 2012. I don't know where. Yeah, I mean, what, or, um, <laughs> why, don't they just, why don't they just all get in a circle and point to the center? I mean, oh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> They're, they're you know, all like uh, pointing the weapons at each other, and well, that's not. Yeah. Well, you know, you got the middle row covering down on the front row. You got the back row covering down on the middle row and the front row. And God knows what's in front of the front row because you can't see by the picture. But I'm thinking, no way. Uh, oh, and the Irishman in Northern Ireland post in the in the uh, chat room says, seen that. Do you Yanks not do uh, gun safety lessons out on the range? I don't know the answer to that question. I know um, we do classroom, and then we transfer the classroom out to the range. I have not seen this. I don't know the circumstances of it. I mean, I don't know. I just know that when I, when I saw this, my jaw dropped. 
But it's like, you know what? I got to post this because, like I said, we got the smartest listeners. Okay, looks like uh, John Theo's calling in. Is this John Theo? It is, John. How you doing? How are you doing, sir? Thank you for calling in. I got my co-host, uh, Terry Kaz from uh, Missouri. Hi, Terry. Howdy, sir. Thanks How for you having doing? me on. Fine, hey, thank you. John. Hey, John, thanks for the email, man, because I was wondering what am I going to do for a Thanksgiving Eve show, and you popped <laughs> up at the right time. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, no problem, pal. I was looking over your bio. I see you teach at a local college there in Massachusetts. I do. Um, you, you do. Yeah. Well, we're not. We're not going to hammer on you yet. Give Give us time to get started. <laughs> uh, I can hammer on myself. I'm sure. Well, we, we we your misery is our entertainment. So, <laughs> oh, trust me. Trust me. I am a uh, a minority in that realm. Oh. Trust oh, me, I'm, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. Um, yeah. You just wrote your Massachusetts. fourth novel. I did. I did. White Mountain's False Flag. What it takes. What are the first three books in the series? Uh, the, well, they're not a series. My first book was uh, The Grotto Under the Tree. It was a young adult fantasy similar to The Chronicles of Narnia. Then I wrote a murder mystery uh, called Cape Ann. It was uh, yes. takes place in Gloucester, Mass., where I live. Um, and then I wrote a sci-fi, I call it a post-post-apocalyptic sci-fi called Mission Trip, which takes place uh, 75 years in the future. And it's basically a retelling of the Pilgrim story. So there's an economic collapse, and then the Christians flee the country for, uh, due to persecution similar to the Pilgrims, but it's more of in a sci-fi setting. And then this book is basically like a pre-collapse novel, uh, White Mountain False Flag is falls a park ranger up in uh, the White Mountains of New Hampshire, and he stumbles across a uh, group of people camping out in the National Forest. He thinks it's just a mobile meth lab, and turns out that he's uncovering uh, what turns out to be a potential false flag uh, that the government's going to perpetrate on the, uh, the citizens of New Hampshire. So this one is more of uh, pulled from today's. My past novels were... Um, in the future, in the past, but this novel really pulled from all the headlines uh, from the past couple of years. Um, for example, um, government shutdowns uh, to raise to force people to complain so they'll raise the debt ceiling, corruption, quantitative easing. Um, I even touch upon potential drone strikes on U.S. soil, which, to my knowledge, hasn't been done yet, but could. Hmm. So this you know is what? really just pulled straight from the headlines. And you're still alive to tell this story? You have not been targeted? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Uh, not yet. Not yet, anyways. Oh, I don't think man. it's sold enough. <laughs> I don't think it's sold enough to really make me a target yet. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's uh, basically all my frustration uh, for the past uh, – two terms of this administration uh, yes. uh, being put down on pe pen to paper the last couple of years. So I almost couldn't call this fiction. It's basically all being pulled from the headlines. Um, there's uh, some um, strong female characters in there as well. There's an adoption scene. Even that was pulled from the headlines from the past few years. And, um, you know, lack of interdepartmental uh, cooperation between park rangers and um, Department of Homeland Security uh, FBI, CIA, all sorts of things, uh, incestuous things like that as well. And I'm a Christian, so there's Christian themes in this as well. Good. You know, I, I got to tell you, sir, um, you are you answered my question before I even had a chance to even ask it, and that was, why did you decide to write it? And it's because of your frustration. And I want you to know, yeah. your frustration is shared by many, many, yeah. many people. Many, yeah. many people, you know. Yeah, it was a, it was very, very cathartic for me the last the last uh, couple of years to write this because we did, I mean, for all intents and purposes, I thought we were going to have a third term of Obama come in, oh. and uh, you know, and you know, being a Christian, even especially in a dark blue state like this, I can see persecution really ramping up against believers in this country. Not mm -hmm. to the extent you see in, you know, the Middle East where Christians are being crucified and murdered. Oh. I just read on uh, 
you know, one, uh, a husband and wife were thrown in a kiln in uh, the Middle East and burned alive by radical uh, Islamists. And, no, uh, you know, no, Christians sir. aren't being... No, sir, it's, that's, it's, that, that's it's impossible. That, 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 sir, is a... No, sir, that's an Islamic interfaith outreach. Mm. Yeah. And they, yeah, and they like to do that. And they keep oh. doing it. You know, I've yeah, always said it's, that... It's, I know. I know what you're saying. It's, I get it. <laughs> I, I just don't to like a, it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I subscribe um, to a newsletter called ICC. It's called International Christian Concern. And every day I'm reading them. about Christians being um, murdered all over the world. So the, being the persecution in this – yeah, exactly. The persecution against Christians in this country is really still at like a legal point where in the military people are getting um, court-martialed, people are getting sued. You know, a lady yeah. went to prison in Kentucky. It's not to the point where other believers around the world are, but I saw it really ramping up, especially under this administration, and it was very frustrating. Very yes. frustrating. I, I, on some level, I think the church has been asleep as well. No. They, should, no. they should be uh, leading the charge. They can't, because their leader is, is a mm-hmm. huge liberal, too. And he looks at this as, you know... Oh, uh, we have a, a chat room going, and we have okay. Porky Wheel. Porky Wheel lives in Northern Ireland. So it's oh, like boy. almost... It's like 2 a.m. there. And wow. he said, he, did, he just put it in the chat room, he says, your book has great reviews on Amazon.com. Congratulations. Oh. Wow, thank great. you. I, I know I have Always. a couple, I think. Well, I, he yeah. didn't specify which ones. I'm just telling you what he said so you can join <laughs> thank in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And uh, it's funny you mentioned Ireland. Um, you know, we, we take for granted over here that we have the Bill of Rights. I mean, in Ireland, right. under Hillary Clinton, you know, she was, she's was she been talking about for years that we have the freedom to worship in this country. And that's not what we have. We have the freedom of religion. I can go out on Correct. the street. I can talk about Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad. I can talk about whatever I want. In Ireland and in Canada and, all, and these other countries, they don't have the Bill of Rights. They have freedom of worship where they can right. go to church and they can pray in their house. But that's it. So they're really restricted over there. Um, oh, there, are, there are Catholic priests that are that are being threatened with uh, prison if they talk about what they believe marriage should be or about abortion. It's it's scary times. It's really scary times, and people just assume the rest of the world is you know has the freedoms that we have, and they don't. They don't. They do not. They do not. We also so, have. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I you know it's a, it's it's funny you mention that because a lot of oh, we got another caller. You know, we got we we do live right. calls here, so let's see who we okay. have here. Go ahead, caller. How are you? <coughs> Hello. It's Chuck. Chuck from <laughs> Round Lake. Chuck, What's we up, have Chuck? we have uh, John Theo Jr., author, and he's here discussing his latest book. And of course, he's a man of many talents, an educated man. And we were just discussing that uh, how Christianity is under attack all over the globe. However, if you're a good Christian and you've been following your Bible, you know, you know that it's a sign of the end times. Yes. You want me no. to respond to that? Sure. Is, uh, is, that, is that a qu- Yeah. It's, it's uh, just well, a comment. Uh, uh, I, I do study the Bible. I go to Bible study every day week and uh but that statement that she made i didn't even have a clue um because uh, basically basically i i forgive and let god handle the rest so, right right but i don't think that necessarily means end times to be honest with you but you know if if, if you could if, if i could hear some additional discussion substantiating that or somehow reinforcing it, I'd be more than interested to listen. So that's probably what I'll do. Uh, John, welcome aboard. Yeah, and I'm I'm sorry that my arrival here sort of interrupted your flow of dialogue. So let me just stop right here and put myself on mute and, and listen to what you have to say. Okay? Uh, all right. Okay. All right. So his que- his have qu- at it. His question, okay, so his question for me was that the end times? Right. We were saying, saying that okay. Christianity is under attack all over the globe. And this is just... Sure. For us Christians who've been follow, you know, who've read the Bible, 
This is yeah. just another sign of the end times. Would you agree yeah. or disagree I mean, with that? I, well, I mean, for, to, to, I'll, and I'll answer the question in a second, but the minute Jesus gave the Great Commission and ascended into heaven, the end times began. So no one knows the exact time, but I'll have, I got to tell you, we're having the, uh, the technology and a lot of things that are coming up uh, that could, may or may not, you know, um, be signs of things to come. I'm not an expert in um, end times uh, prophecy. Um, mm-hmm. I don't, you know, there's the whole pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. I'm definitely not in the pre-trib camp, camp where people will no. be raptured out of here before any of the bad times come. I wish it was like that. I really do. Um, but I don't think that that is the case. Again, I'm not mm-hmm. an expert in it, so I don't know when oh. Jesus says, you know, we don't know when the uh, the end times will come. Um, there will be signs, though. Um, and, you know, the technology is there now that we're talking about RFID chips in people's hands. Um, and the technology is there where stuff like that could happen. So it could be sooner than later. Honestly, there's so many people I know that are not um, saved or Bible-believing Christians. So I hope it's not now. <laughs> I hope there's still time because there's so many people I still uh, want to hear I uh, want to reach. So again, I'm not an expert on that, um, and right. that's not really one of the themes in my book. But I, I you know, the times are they're scary, and uh, you know, I, I actually feel bad for people who aren't believers because, I mean, unless uh, unless you're a believer, it's it's hard to make sense of everything out there. I mean, yeah, you could be a libertarian and you have all these worldviews, and and you know, you you. You don't agree with this. You don't agree with that. But I think above that, you need to have a uh, how can I say it like a uh, a spiritual perception as well. I think that yep. it, it, things will make more sense that way. Mm-hmm. Right. But I, I I don't. I'm not trying to dodge the question. I'm not an expert nope. in, in eschatology. So. Eschatology. And you're honest, so I think that's a good thing. Yeah. So please, uh, I, yeah. 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 I don't. And, and I don't I think claim his answer to know. Was reasonable. Yeah. Right. I don't claim to know. There is a question coming out of the chat room. Uh, it's from Porky Wheel. He says he wants to know if you plan to expand this book into a series or are you just going to leave it off as you know one book? I left it. I made sure to complete the, um, the arc, the story arc, but okay. I did leave it open that I could. I mean, it walks right up to the line where the, the story's complete, but it walks right up to the line where the collapse is about to happen. Uh, mm-hmm. It kind of has a um, a little bit of a happy, happily ever after ending, but then you know the radio comes on and they're talking about stock markets going in the toilet, um, economic collapse happening, all the things that were kind of mentioned throughout the story. So I did leave the door open that if this mm-hmm. book sells and there's a um, uh, you know a, a demand for it, I, I could definitely write another story to go with it or two. Um, the character I really fell in love with, his name's Ransom Donovan which is kind of uh, an homage to one of my favorite Westerns of all time, the man who shot Liberty Valance. Uh, so he's kind of a cop, even though he's in New Hampshire, he's kind of a cowboy. He has a lever action rifle and chambered in 45 Colt, um, nice. kind of a throwback to a different, uh, <laughs> different uh, generation. I really geeked out on the firearms and the trucks and all those things I can't afford, but you love to watch in prepping videos or podcasts. So I had a lot of fun with this novel as well. Um, and, um, so I, I left the door open that if there's a demand, if it's a popular, um, I will do a sequel to it. So. John, forgive me since I arrived late, though. Uh, so I didn't get a chance to get the title of your book. Can you please uh, give me the title again, and, and I'll look it up so I can read up on the synopsis? synopsis? It's, uh, white, it's called White Mountains False Flag, and it follows a park ranger who works in the White Mountains National Forest in um, New Hampshire. And, again, he stumbles upon a group of people in the woods, they tr- he th- thinks it's a mobile meth lab. Turns out he uncovers a huge conspiracy, and throughout the story, he's being pulled and pushed in different directions, whether or not he wants to look under the next stone, push it further, or just go back to his life and bury his head in the sand and, you know, um, not see what's around the corner. And he gets drawn into this fight, and his mm-hmm. friends, and one of his friends is a pastor as well. So I'm kind of addressed the role of the church in today's um, society as well. And the pastor's name is John Mueller, 
who is a throwback and homage to John Peter Muhlenberg from the Revolutionary War. He was a Black Robe Regiment pastor from the Revolutionary War, and that's kind of who I modeled his pastor friend after. <laughs> um, and unlike other books, the pastor, and I'm not calling people to, to raise arms, he actually carries a gun and um, helps defend his friend at the end with firearms. So it's, it's kind of a, in that context, it's a little radical, um, right. but it's, uh, it's a throwback to the Black Robe Regiment. And, and I'm trying to like get the church you know, to wake up. I'm not, obviously, I don't promote violence, but the church really needs to take the lead on this and not just um, – they, they, they're very, I think, been apathetic in regards to the culture for the past decade or two, and they've kind of let the reins go, and I'm not sure why. I think I can explain that. Sure. Um, well, over the past years during Obama's uh, two-term presidency uh, and, and with the, uh, the left embracing the grass, grassroots movement through social media and crowdsourcing news and so on and so forth, uh, I think what, what happened was the, the, the Christianity, the whole concept of, of uh, uh, a pro-life in addition, in addition to that, They've become marginalized. Uh, they've become. They've become. I mean. I mean. Let's be honest. Regardless of what religion, the Constitution gives everyone the right to be able to not only have free speech and peacefully assemble, but also to worship. And I, what the Democrats and Obama have done was basically give more rights to certain groups at the cost of the rights to other groups who are also entitled to it equally and unconditionally under the law. And by that, I mean. I mean Caucasians. Uh, versus, you know, be becoming marginalized and 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 being the target of criticism and uh, vilification, while the social culture dictated that more rights and equity and justice should go to the blacks or should go to the Hispanics or should go to the transgendered and so on and so forth. And while and and, and in the process of doing that, they denied the same to the same groups who are also entitled to it by law because. Uh, the, to liberals or to Democrats, they just weren't popular enough or didn't fit the status quo that they were looking for. And by that, I mean Caucasians, I mean, I mean yeah. uh, the Christians, uh, the church, and, and you know, even for the past year, as of late, even law enforcement. So yeah. what, we see, what we see here is basically a, a really large and unprecedented hypocrisy, or maybe it is president. It's just I just only caught a, a, got a clue or caught wind of it recently and that is that we have we have a, a political party and a movement uh whose sales brochure says equality tolerance and so on and so forth but their but sure. what their actions demonstrate is contrary to what their sales brochure says so i think that pretty much c- yeah. comes into play uh if, if you're questioning or trying to figure out uh why the church or why the christians have been sure. passive so far is is because of the fact that they want they don't want to be more in a pool of doo-doo as they have been yeah. uh, during the, the Obama uh, presidency. So, so that, that pretty much is how I would, uh, how I would explain it. But, but whether or not you agree, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more than uh, interested no, to hear what your feedback is. No, that's, no, that's really insightful. I mean, you've, you've touched upon some, a lot of points there. I, I always just chalked it up to, well, they don't want to lose their 5013C status. But I think right. you took it a little deeper than that. I think but you definitely right. took it a little deeper than that. Um, and, so, and you can see that they're doing class warfare to kind of keep people occupied. Yep. Kind of like the Wizard of Oz. Like, don't look behind the curtain. Yep. Look over here. The bread and circus that from, like, ancient Roman times, whether it's reality <laughs> TV or class warfare or whatever. Don't look at the $20 trillion debt. Look over no. here. Look over here. And they're trying to really keep people, like, distracted whether it's up here in New England where it's all about deflated footballs with Tom Brady for the past year or two. I mean, I mean, it's just, you know, the, the, the media and, and I'm like, hello, you know, look at what's going on in Venezuela. Look at what's going on in the Middle East. Look at our debt. Look right. at, you know, in like you, you sometimes you feel like no one's awake. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I think you're spot on I, and who knows the, 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 the the reasons behind all of it, and a lot of it could just be for a distraction too. Yeah, and, and the five hundred one like this type of game, right? And the five hundred one C three status was also uh, uh, evident 
uh, when they then when they were being scrutinized because a lot of those requests were being turned down by virtue of, of, of those groups who were requesting it were right leaning or, or conser- conservative leaning. Yeah, I, I think you recall yeah. that that incident as well. So that that plays into it as well. Yeah, I mean, look at the IRS and the Tea Partiers. I have a Christian college right down the street from me, uh, Gordon College, that was absolutely persecuted because the president of the college two years ago signed, just simply signed a letter reaffirming their faith and their stance on marriage along with a couple other churches in the country. And they got audited for their accreditation. They had surrounding towns disassociate their, their teachers being able to work there, like just a hammered with persecution and all the president did was sign a letter and i've just it was shocking like they like tried to ruin the guy's life that the the college has just been like beat on for for the past a couple of years and um it's shocking to see that type of persecution um come at people of faith absolutely you know i think i think we have to that you know people forget it's freedom of religion, not freedom yeah. from religion, and yeah. the left and the left likes to look at it. It's freedom from religion, and getting back to the five hundred one c three, you know that you know this is this is going to get me in trouble, but I'm going to say it anyways. There are some churches that are allowed to go ahead and talk politics from the pulpit, and then there are mm-hmm. others who. Absolutely will not because they'll lose their 501c3. Now, the way to get around that is let your 501c3 status, you know, let it go. Once you yeah. don't use that 501c3 status, you can talk about anything you want from the pulpit. And grant, yeah. okay, so you got pay, so you got to pay some taxes. You know, that's yeah. the way to get around it. Churches have to yeah. get out of this idea that they have to have a 501c3. No, you do not have to have. You absolutely do not. You don't have to have that 501c3. Yeah. And if you don't have it, then there's nothing the IRS can do to you. So exactly. um, in terms of, you know, you want to talk about particular candidates or a particular point of political view from the pulpit, you may. Yeah. And, and this yeah. goes back to the revolution. It was not unusual absolutely. For, peop- for people to go back, you know, go to church, which was the meeting place of the whole town anyways. Yeah. And they would discuss politics in the pulpit yeah. and what You're absolutely it's right. It, they would, and so, not only would they ahead. talk about politics in the pulpit, they would talk about just current events. They would even right. tell their congregation who they should vote for. Right. Which, I, you know, I think that's a radical concept in churches today. But, I mean, I don't think it's bad if, 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 you, if you're the pastor up there and you're like, look, this candidate's clearly more in line with the Bible uh, than the other candidate. I, right. And, you know— Hillary, Hillary wants to kill babies up until uh, a minute before they're born. Well, oh, clearly, the Bible God. says that's wrong. that's wrong. Clearly, it's called murder. You know, the God, <laughs> yes, it's called murder. You, sh- you know, you shouldn't murder. You, God knit you together in your mother's womb. I mean, it's it oh. couldn't be more crystal clear. Uh, yeah, it's it's um, so yeah I, yeah the uh, pe- and people want to hear from their pastors on this, and I think where a lot of pastors are are addressing it is maybe through like Sunday school classes and things like that, what they don't directly address it on the pulpit. Correct. Which is, I, I guess, okay I as long that. as they do get it out there. Because people want to know what should we do? What should we do? P- there's a lot of people that aren't really awake. Um, that's kind of my term for prepping, just being awake, just awake to everything, mm-hmm. geopolitically, socioeconomically, religiously. And people want to know. They want, they're like, you know, tell us, you know, not what to do, but they want some guidance from the pastors in their daily lives as well, you know, how to navigate this, especially in places like Massachusetts where it's so liberal and not really uh, kind of hostile to Christians. Um, so, yeah, we, we could use some help navigating these waters, you know. That's kind of interesting. It's in Massachusetts. Isn't that where Plymouth Rock is? <laughs> oh, my Puritan? gosh. I, yeah, I was, on a, <laughs> just... uh, I was on a podcast a few weeks ago, and I was saying how – just embarrassed I am that not only Plymouth Rock, this is where Lexington Concord was. Lex, the shot heard around the world. This is where liberty started in this country. And we just had our um, AR-15s taken away from us in this state. They don't sell them anymore because the AG um, thought, I woke heard up one day that. and said, um, I'm going to make a rule that you can't sell this platform rifle anymore. So now no one can buy an AR-15 platform rifle in this state anymore. And 
this is Lexington and Concord. I'm like, how embarrassing is that? You would think we'd be like as free as Texas. But we're not. That's unbelievable. And part, You're not. part of the reason why I wrote, no, no. And uh, part of the reason why I wrote this novel is it's kind of a love letter to New Hampshire because they are the motto of live free or die. I know they voted, right. they shifted blue this last election, but you go up there, it's drastically different. I think of New Hampshire as like the last free state on the eastern seaboard because they really do. <laughs> when you go up there, I mean, you can there's firearm stores everywhere. You can buy fireworks on the side of the road. No one wears helmets on their motorcycles. They carry knives on their belts. It's really like live free or die up there. It's it's a huge contrast to Massachusetts, and it's really like a love letter to the state of New Hampshire. Like rock on, like you stay strong because it's literally the last free state along the eastern seaboard. Wow. <coughs> how, Excuse me. How sad. How sad is that? Yeah, I just, you know, I I had a uh, a buddy of mine. He grew up in Massachusetts, and he says he says you know the western half of the state is much more conservative than the yeah. eastern half of the state. But he says the eastern yeah. half of the state is like is in Chicago, where they run yeah. the election and they and they turn yeah. the elections there. So yeah, yeah. I, I just, mean, there's still a lot of good people here, but everywhere I drive, I saw those Hillary signs. I like oh. literally everywhere. You know those signs of the arrow that says "I'm a stupid." You know those types of yeah. signs. I just see them everywhere. They're everywhere, <laughs> and it's just you know. I saw one Gary Johnson sign, a couple, maybe a couple Trump signs, but I think out in Western Massachusetts, it is a little different. But yeah. there are still. I mean. Uh, my brother-in-law went to a gun range recently with my friend in, in a couple towns over, and everyone there had the Trump signs on there. So there's still a lot of, like, you know, patriots in this state. It's just we're all right. numbered. It's a bummer. It's a real bummer. And like it's, I said, yeah. I mean, it was a great state to grow up in, but and this is where liberty started in this country. It's, oh, it's so frustrating. So frustrating. <laughs> so let me ask you – if. In your area, do you find it hard trying to find like-minded people, people that are conservative or or a prepper type um, uh, perspective? Um, yes, 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 yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm at a church. I'm going to send you a, a Facebook request, okay. and um, if I can find you, and I'm going to find a, a Facebook request for you. And um, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce you to a couple friends I got over there. Sure, definitely. One, one, one of them is an them. army buddy of mine that I I went to school. Great. Uh, <laughs> I, I definitely I would love to. Um, even my conservative friends, they're really not fully um, fully awake as to like how bad things are and how we're still on a knife edge. And just because, you know, Trump got elected, that doesn't mean anything. I think it's great right. that Hillary didn't get elected, but I think I'm kind of pessimistic. I'm thinking maybe he'll buy us a little time to get a little more prepared or, you know, to just be ready for when that wave hits because $20 trillion is $20 trillion and you just can't keep printing money forever. And um, there's going to be a reckoning at some point, and if the interest rates go up just a notch, you know, it's going to kick us into a recession, which could spiral into something much worse. I mean, hey, maybe he can pull a rabbit out of a hat and do something, but I don't know. I, I still see tough times coming. But, yeah, I do feel all alone, even with a lot of people in my church. I just don't feel like they're awake to what could be coming because, you know, well, 2000, oh, you. 2008, we, we got out of that. Well, it's not going to happen the same way. Well, I'll tell you, like, you know, as Peter in the Bible, as, as he sees it, for, for, people, for end-time Christians, right, yeah. when it's – during the end of days, um, Christians who are living under the conditions of, of hardship, stress, and oppositions, um, they're called to do only one thing. I, they're, they are to practice holiness, to do good to others wherever, whenever they can, and they're supposed to work towards the works of God while it is day. So, you know, that it's just... I think a lot of churches that want to actually take the the challenge to address preppers being a prepper group, um, it depends on the mentality of the type of denomination, of course. Yeah. But 
I mean, that has a huge part in it, I believe, um, because yeah. not every Christian church is made the same. I mean, it's just not yeah, like that. Exactly. So um, yeah. the denomination has a huge part, a huge part of it. The part of the country you're talking about will have a huge part in it. Yeah. And, um, and the culture within each church, because you can have a, uh, let's say Southern Baptist church in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia, think, completely different than Southern Christian Church, Southern Baptist Christian Church in Missouri. Um, yeah. Atlanta, they'll probably have a very liberal mindset in, yeah. you know, so in Missouri, you probably have more conservative, right? But yeah. I think a lot of them don't want that those who disagree with it, and they're taking the stance of the Bible itself, leaving politics out, Completely. They're worried about where are you laying your eggs of your basket? You know, where mm-hmm. are you putting your hopes? And where do you place mm-hmm. your fear? The, yeah, you know. Absolutely. So if it is the end times and we don't know when, then, and I, and I said this last week, I think, um, if, if the end time comes, and the rapture happens, and I'm boom, I'm gone, right? I'm out, I'm out to heaven. Hopefully, I'm gone, right? Yeah. Well, somebody else no. will get my preps. Sure. That's fine, you know. Sure. And I think that you can debate that, saying, "Look, we're talking about for the persecution of the church, the persecution of the Christians, the persecution of the citizens, and the financial hardships, like a huge economic depressions." That could be just not just this country, but globally, um, because if America collapses, I guarantee you the rest of the world is going to collapse. I mean, it's going to be oh, of course. war and economic turmoil. There's no more uh, financial aid for a lot of people. Yeah, uh, oh, of course, of course. And not only that, if, if the U.S. collapses economically, the rest of the world will collapse economically. But if the U.S. collapses property-wise, uh, like if let's say we go to socialism – I think all the countries that are socialist will go to communism. I think it'll trickle down that way. They'll collapse that way morally or politically as well. You had, you had a good point, though. You were just talking about um, put all your eggs in one basket, and you were talking about fear. One thing I, I did want to absolutely stress that if anyone's – any Christian's prepping like out of fear, you're doing it for the wrong reason. And for uh, I agree. a while back – I started to do it a little bit out of fear, and I stopped. I actually just stopped cold turkey. And um, I'm like, I'm doing it for the wrong reason. Where where am I placed? I'm like, I'm not of this world. I I have to rely on God. I mean, this is is wrong. So I just stopped altogether. And then what I've been doing the past few months is more looking into, like, skills and just being aware, get in another prep, very important prep is get out of debt. I've been working on that. Um, so if anyone's doing it, never, ever, ever, ever do it out of fear. I can't stress that enough because you're not relying on God at that point. Well, may no, I ask I, you, may, may I, I ask totally you, agree. Well, may I ask you what would be, as far as prepping in general, uh, as a concept, what would be the right reasons to prep for? Um, or is, I mean, any, is any type of prepping is going to be, uh, because they lost faith in God? I mean, no, no, not necessarily. I mean, if, if if you're just a Christian who doesn't think you should prep at all, I think at a minimum you should listen to the government, do what FEMA says, have a couple of days' worth of food and supplies in your house, some extra batteries, candles, bandages, things like that. I don't think that's wrong. Um, and then on the other extreme, I'm not really one to go build a bunker and stock up 10 years' worth of food. I'd rather, you know, have some supplies, have a couple chickens, no, have some skills. So if something does happen, great. If not... You know, but I never want to do something out of fear. I want to do it. I'm just crunching data. Okay, the economy's turning. I'm going to get my money out of the stock market. Or not that I have any money in the stock market, but I'm just saying uh-huh. it's just, okay, I see a rough storm coming. Let's tack left or tack right. It's just crunching data at this point. Just like you would, you know, you have a hurricane coming or something, and you put your shovel on the porch, and you fill up your gas tank in your car. You don't panic, but, you know, instead you back your car in and – you just prepare for the storm, and you just tack left or tack right. I think it's just, you know, you can do it kind of methodical hmm. and just kind of crunch data and, and do it, you know, okay. kind of uh, removed from it, in my opinion. 
Right. Okay. So, uh, okay. Um, all right. Uh, so I'll, I'll leave the whole prepping concept where, where it lies. You also mentioned earlier about, about if, if America financially or economically collapsed, so does the world. Um, maybe, maybe not. So what I wanted to suggest mm-hmm. to you, John, is you're familiar, sure. you're, you're familiar with the term uh, reserve currency, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, Basically, it's my understanding that a lot of the countries, especially since the Chinese yuan has achieved reserve currency status and is now officially a reserve currency as of uh, either December. Uh, it will be in December, I think, but it was okay. uh, voted to be a reserve currency in the month of October, if I remember correctly. It's my understanding, though I can't substantiate it because it's hard for me to find information on it, but it, I'm, I'm, what my expectations are is that a lot of these countries who do hold the American dollar as a reserve currency to to uh, uh I guess it's used to uh, uh, reinforce the value of their own currency as, as, as a holding. Um, is that they're going to try to, or they have been trying to uh, dump the American dollar as a reserve currency to, and, and then convert it to another reserve currency. Mm-hmm. And from what I understand, the, the the rule, at least according to the Fed, is once the United, the American dollar loses reserve currency status, and it can happen possibly if mm-hmm. enough countries countries have converted their reserve currency from the dollar to another currency in sufficient amount, right. then the Fed rule is that the, that the, the, United, the, the Fed is unable to print more money. Correct. That's um, my understanding as well. Yeah, exactly. So in, in which case it might come up with a, it might end up as a possible scenario that America may have a economic collapse or some type of financial uh, situation. Um, that may not affect the entire world because a, lo- a lot of the world has converted their currency from the American dollar. In which case, it sounds to me that that would be. And you know what's going to happen? We're talking about hyperinflation. We're talking. Sure. We're talking about the American dollar losing uh, its, its its value and dropping like a rock. So yeah. Uh, hey, can you make a book out of that? Make it into a fix. Make make it make, make it into a fictitious <laughs> work and and and, and, and make it. But throw in conspiracies and all that because that would be great. Oh yeah, and, and it would involve uh, millennial zombies with coloring books and Play-Doh, not knowing what to do when it happens. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <much longer. laughs> oh. <laughs> Anyways, I, so just, I don't I know if it'd be a comedy or, or a horror movie. Well, well you're this is taped in a live audience. Look, if Dan <laughs> Brown can make a conspiracy out of the Illuminati, come on, I think I think. You know, uh, the, there might be a potential story there somehow. I don't be. know. I, it, I just thought, could. I just thought I suggested. Could. Yeah, you're the first author I'm talking to, by the way. So I thought I'd suggest it anyway, just because you no, know. No, it's it would actually that concept would make a great sequel to this book. I could use that as a springboard to to bring on an economic collapse. Okay, no problem. Just just you I know, see sit that on there's it. There's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of EMP storylines going about now in the the prepper fiction world. I think the EMP has been used up. So that one might oh, be yeah. good, hyperinflation. That's true. Yeah, yeah. There there was a similar storyline for computer gaming called, uh, what is it called? The, the, the Division. But that was basically a viral uh, pandemic caused by American dollar bills that were infected with some type of virus that made everyone sick. So not quite the same. Huh. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I think, I don't know, it's, you don't have to give me your answer. You don't have to commit to anything. Okay. Sleep on it, sit on it, pray on it, uh, and and you know we'll see where you go, where it goes with that. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. All thank right. you. Oh, you guys are funny. Well, we are just guys sit, sitting around the round table, just talking. So the so you know this is the beauty of the show. We yeah, may start out with one subject. We start off with one subject, and we will end with another. I promise you. Um, you know, what, I with this whole discussion, thing, I think it's yeah. worth something for us to ponder. Each one of our families to ponder, and also talk with our our local clergy, um, our our pastors, and all. So, and then talk about this with our wives and our children, because, like for myself, I try to explain. A, I have a seventeen-year-old son. And I try to explain a lot of things about the world. I mean, I just don't want um, him to have simply a high school diploma. He learns how to be good at home, and then he's off in the world. I want him to understand and be a critical thinker. 
somebody who can yeah. think out of the box and think more in depth and things like that. Even though he's a knucklehead, I'm doing the best I can. Yeah. So like, uh, you know, he's a knucklehead like his father, right? Well, he, um, I think that this would be a very good subject to have a discussion with your children to say, look, you know, if we're preppers, you see dad is and mom, we're collecting food. We got guns. We've got survival techniques that we, we're learning and skills. We're collecting books, yeah. different things like this. Now, yeah. let, let's not forget that, you know, to, to not lose perspective and that we're not doing it out of fear. We're doing it out of precaution. We're doing it to yeah. make sure. Inter- it's an insurance policy type thing. Yeah. And, and that we're not losing faith in the Lord to be able to sustain us. I mean, for, for example, right now I'm looking to go back to school. Um, I mean, I'm 50 years old, but I'm looking to go back to school for my master's in divinity. And I told right. everybody, I said, you know what? I have no idea how I'm going to pay for this. I truly have no idea. But it's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and I believe that the, the timing uh, is right. And I said, I believe that the Holy Spirit will find a way. If he wants me to do it, if he thinks this is the right time, he'll find me a way. And in the last two weeks, a few things have been developing, and I think, you know what, I think I have a plan. Wow. And, I love and another so, like that. something else just came across today, I found out, which is another blessing that will help me make sure that this plan can uh, can take place. So um, I think that if we have faith, right, and not just the education in the Bible, but the faith that goes behind it, that 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 is the the, the word is that the Lord is is the what's in the Bible, and we trust in the Holy Spirit to take care of us, and. That when when Jesus says, you know what, the world is too much, I'm going to come back down, we're going to fix this again, then we'll be ready. But until then, we got to feed ourselves, we have to take care of ourselves, we have to be realistic, too, about the way the world really is. There's people out there that will kill you and take all your stuff. And yeah. if you have to defend yourself, then you have to defend yourself. Kind of like the yeah. Pope with Hitler. He didn't want to oh, do a lot of things, but oh, good. there's times when you have to take a stand against evil. Yeah. I yeah. think, uh, oh, boy. Which leads wow. me to a possible, uh, another possible storyline. <laughs> having, having to do with the Bilderberg group and the whole oh. concept that they had the belief of reducing the population. So it's more in alignment with uh, the environment or something like that. Okay, yeah, it's funny you that. say that. Um I'm working on a sequel to my sci-fi novel, and there's a Bilderberg group in it. Um, I call them oh, – what did I call them? They they have the um, – what did the pioneers meet out in the frontier once a year? It was the, um, the trappers. Uh, anyways, I have a Bilderberg-type group in that, and I know, I know exactly what you're saying about population control. I, I have a Bill Gates-ish type character. In the in the story as well, and I know that he's obsessed with getting the population from seven billion down to one billion or five hundred thousand. I mean, these people are insane. They're absolutely insane. Oh, and, what's the uh, title? Uh, it's uh, it's going to be Mission Trip um, Exodus and Genesis, or Genesis and Exodus. I haven't figured it out yet. I think Genesis and Exodus, but it's Mission Trip, um, a sequel to my sci-fi novel, which I'm hoping I'll be done with probably within a few months. But yeah, I do have Excellent. a Bilderberg type group in there and a Bill Gates ish type character that's kind of re- redeemed, we'll say. Yes. Great minds think alike, even though I'm a little bit behind. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, the Bilderbergs, George Soros, Bilderbergs, they're kind of uh, low hanging fruit. They're easy targets. They're easy to almost draw into fiction because you almost can't believe they exist. You right. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Sometimes life is scarier than fiction. Well, oh, it is too. Depending on how many peel, uh, how many onions uh, layers you peel, <laughs> I yeah. don't like what you see. Yeah, you know, I, one of the things. Sometimes you guys ever were oblivious to some of the stuff after you 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 found out about it. Like everyone else, just worried about 
the sports teams and, right. you know, what, what your buddies are doing this weekend, which golf course you're going to play. Sometimes I, I like, I'm like, why do I, I, I know too much. I, I, I wish I didn't know all this stuff. Uh, Ignorance is bliss. Sometimes, sometimes. You know, you know, one of the like, things. Did you guys see it down in Venezuela? They're stealing animals out of the zoo and killing them for food. Did you guys? Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. The pats are on. You know, what, what did you say about Venezuela? Really? Exactly. Yeah. And they didn't report it much either. But that—that's a perfect no. example. Mm. I know. Uh, one of the things that I had a problem with, and I and I know some of the my uh, church members that you know that I go to church. They they listen to the show. I wanted to, I, I approached the pastor one time. True story, by the way. Uh, when I tell a true story, I always give out the warning. True story, true story, true, true story. story. True, true story. So I approached the pastor. I said, you know, I said, you know, I've got, you know, she knows about my, my radio show. And I said, you know, I'd like to take some time just to, you know, with the, you know, teach the church members how to prep. Okay, let me think about it. Last I heard, last I heard about it. That was the last I heard. And then about a month and a half ago, I get word through the grapevine, no, she doesn't like prepping. And I said, well, why doesn't she like prepping? And she said, well, because it takes the focus off of God and Jesus. And I said, but prepping is in the Bible. Many examples of prepping. So I just wanted to put it out there. It's like, you know, I guess there are some pastors out there who feel that prepping takes that focus off it, but I think I it can be it. a great, I think it could be a great outreach tool to people right? because a lot right. of times if they're not Christians and they, they find, and you open their eyes to what's going on in the world, they'll actually get scared. And that, that fear will drive them to, okay, a, a reality that I need a spiritual, you know, um, component to my life because I'm not going to be here forever. The world's crazy. But I had a similar instance with my pastor um, in regards to prepping. A, a couple of years ago, I talked about maybe getting some preserved food just for them to throw in a closet somewhere. They weren't right. really receptive to it. But one thing I've been hammering them on for the past year is security. I'm like, you've got to get security. I don't care if it's an, if it's an off-duty cop that attends our church. Have them come in armed, sit in the back row. You have got to do this because there are church shootings now – that it, I have this theory that and I hope I'm wrong, but within I think it could be a common occurrence when you have police details outside of churches in the future, uh, and not just to direct traffic, but for security. Because uh, there was a, a group, um, a radical um, group that was caught out in I want to say it's like Detroit. They were using a church um, email distribution list to target members of the church, and the FBI right. caught them. Um, did you guys hear about that? I remember reading something the, what, about that. Yeah, what was the cause of the agenda for that? Um, I, I know that it was radical Islamists. They were they were pulling church uh, dockets off their website to try and target members just just for you know assassinating the infidel. I guess I'm not sure, but okay. um, not just that, but church. There have been church shootings the last couple of years, and every time there's one, I send it to my pastor. I'm like, uh, hello, what are you doing about this? What are you doing about this? And finally. They are starting to put a program into place. So I think one, one or two things with prepping in regards to the church is security and economy because I feel like the church is still kind of asleep, and they think next year is going to be like this year. And the, I think the church needs to work on budgeting and planning for an economic downturn. So when the economy collapses, they don't have to shut down all their mission trips because they saw something coming down the line. So right. I think those are two prepping things that are – I think uh, could be relayed on to pastors easier than skills or food storage for for now. Maybe open their eyes up to things. But securing the, an economy are two biggies with me that I think the church, the big C church, needs to wake up to. What do you guys think? I think uh, well, with my church, believe it or not, I know we've got three or four people that have weapons on them. Um, I've talked about it. yes. And they have their concealed carry, and that's Good. fine, because you know our church is is what is what you know it's well it's a church of God that's the uh, you know, but it's a come as you are church and we get a, we get quite a few uh, alcoholics or mm-hmm. drug addicts that come in 
and God love them. We want them to come yeah. in. Sure. But that does not mean that it's always going to be safe or something, you know, sure. all it takes is one. Don't believe me? Look, it was it yeah. was South Carolina down there with uh, Mr. Dillon going crazy in, in that church. Yeah. Exactly. I'm surprised we don't have more issues at the churches because most of them do not have security, even though they, right. they need it. It, it, it doesn't yeah. matter what size the church is. You don't have to hire someone, but you should. No. But, you know, I don't know that the pastor knows that we have you know, guys are sitting in the back with firearms. And I, and I told him, I said, look, I said, you know, somebody comes in, I said, and they start shooting. So if I can't get to my weapon, I'm throwing chairs. I'm throwing anything I can yeah. in that general direction. So, so be prepared to duck because I'm throwing stuff. I'll, I'll throw the I'll yeah. throw my Bible at him. I don't care. But he got the, like the, the hit, hit him in a book going like a food fight in a high school cafeteria. Hey, <laughs> it hurts getting hit by those things. I went to Catholic school. I know what I know what abuse is. <laughs> Physical abuse. I've been whacked. I've been whacked across the knuckles more times than I care to. Yeah, I care to admit. By God, those sisters, hey, yeah. you are there to learn, and by God, you better be learning. They don't have time for you. But going back to it, though, seriously, you got to have. You know, you don't have to hire security, but you should have guys who have yeah. their weapons and have them, you know, concealed. And that's fine. You know, and the, and, you know, that's, you know, that's the way I look at it. That's one way to get around it. And I can't agree with you more about having security, yeah. armed yeah. security at the church. Yeah. Our church did the same thing. I mean, we've just, we have a whole new bank of cameras everywhere. I mean, I, there must be like two dozen cameras throughout the whole thing, but we also have, Christian school we started right uh, a couple years ago and it's grown and mm-hmm. not just during the school hours but during uh, any one of the sermons or or events especially we have uh we have security and we're just Good they look it. like just anybody else it's not like you can tell who it is i i know who they are but um yeah they're purposely designated but yeah, that's it's unfortunate, it but but it's needed. It's better to be a day late than you know. Oh, I mean, a, yeah. a, an hour early, whatever the phrase is, you know, a day early than you know, a day late. I mean, it's just, it's 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 a no brainer for me. I mean, it's just, it's literally the difference between life and death. There's no downside, literally no downside to having there isn't. a responsible armed person in church. There's no downside, none. Um, you know, obviously. Uh, well, well, except for the liberal that you run into that's going to get on their uh, soapbox and, and, and vilify and criticize you for having, you know, having a firearm on you when there's children around and stuff like that. You, know, you don't tell them. People you got to watch out for. No, you, yeah, huh? you don't tell them. You don't no, tell them. Yeah, what a, you don't. Yes, you don't but there's, a difference be- there's a difference between those who do it amongst themselves. Like, I'm going to do it because... I understand the you know the differences of threats and and worry, and then there's some churches who have officially, okay, we got three guys, and we know, mm. and we asked them, yeah, if you don't mind, could you could you bring your firearm because we trust you, we know who you are, and we know, yeah. you know what I mean. But you know, and this not goes back compl- to what I said. Uh, this goes back to what I said before about it depends on what kind of denomination you're in. It depends yeah. on what part of the country you're in. And it depends on the mindset of the individual church. Yeah. But it's not more complicated than that. You don't need to have all these meetings and protocols. Okay, you you're don't. concealed carry, sit in the back row. You're in the early service. You're in the late service. Done. It's not more complicated than that. It's just like it really is. It frustrates me that you just can't just do that and move on to the next problem. Okay, we're going to talk about missions trips. Great. We're going to talk about budget. Great. It, it's not. It's not more complicated than that. And and it you don't tell people. Yeah. Well, you even mission trips. E- even mission trips, you got to worry about when you go overseas. Yeah. In today's age. Yeah, I agree. Because some I some agree. parts of Africa. You might be trying to spread the word and do good things, but two or three hundred miles away, there could be a faction that doesn't want you showing up. And it we doesn't have to be religious. They could have been drug and yeah. drug and, uh, influenced. Yeah, 
We had a uh, church go on a uh, sister church uh, near us go down on a mission trip a couple of years ago down to South America, and the uh-huh. bus was attacked by a bunch of guys um, who came out of the jungle, and a couple of people were sexually assaulted. Thank the Lord, no one was murdered. But my first reaction when I turned to my wife is, I was mad at the church. These guys right. are going to do what they're going to do. They're evil men. They're going to do what they're going to do. It's like, you know, shame on the church for not being prepared. I would like, you know, you, you ever hear that story about the guy who's on the roof of his house and the flood's coming and the, right, the, right. the warnings come on the radio and he says, no, 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 God's going to save me. Then the boat comes by. No, no, no God's going to save me. The helicopter comes by. No, no, no God's going to save me. And he goes, why didn't you save me? And he goes, I sent you this. I sent you this. I sent you this. It just frustrated me because these evil guys are going to do what they're going to do. And the church should do something, be a little more prepared, not just be like, oh, God will protect them protective so of course he can but you're almost testing god when you don't do anything uh well you are you testing him. no you are tempting him you know god gave us brains it's time to start using them look yeah I'm, I, you don't think look i'll tell you right now i'm surprised like i said i have i'm not i'm surprised we have not seen more attacks on the church any church in the united states yeah but yeah. you go overseas like terry's talking about they got guys in the churches, oh. the ones that are thinking about that know what's going on, and they're not concealed carry either. They're all, you know, they got yeah. their automatic weapons and they're right there, and they need to be. Look, they the need fight to be. Between, the the fight between good and evil is not only in the ethereal plane, but it's also right. here in the physical world among us. Yeah. You know, they say, you know, we, you know, I, you know, they say, you know. You know, the devil goes around as a lion to see who he can devour. Well, if you're going to get in the cage, you better be armed. You better be ready to defend yeah. yourself and others. There's no excuse for it. For right. letting that of course, that you point. should be armed spiritually. Of course, you should be armed. Absolutely. But you don't walk, you know, into a cage with, with a wild animal without a stick as well. Right. You, Jesus you know, said in the end of Luke, he said... Go get a sword. The beginning of Luke, he said, don't bring anything. In the end of Luke, uh, Gospel of Luke, he said, go get a sword. He was very clear about that. Get a purse. Get a sword. And if you have to, sell your garment and buy one. And if Jesus was alive today, he'd have us all carry AR-15s. So we don't have I mean, to play that, around with this guy. You know, the evil's that, out there, baby. The, the yeah. evil people are out there. And they're looking to make a name for themselves. If even for a yeah. week, oh, the, you know, here's this guy down Missouri. He went crazy in the church, or he he hit the church and killed a bunch of people. He doesn't care, you know. And I don't, and I, and I don't care what his reasons are. Yeah, you come in, you come into church looking, you know, the same thing at the school. What was that? Uh, what was it in Pennsylvania where they had the uh, Amish school? And all, yeah. and the, that idiot walked into school there. And it's like yeah. that was that was a warning of things to come. Yeah. And the church yeah. still, still refuses to accept the reality of the situation. Well, you know that that the thing can be said for schools as well. I mean, so uh, right. yeah. I think there seems there's, there seems to be some complacency, probably in both areas. Uh, despite what has happened, despite the results, despite the contributing factors that allowed it or enabled a, a person or persons to do those heinous uh, acts, but has anything really changed since then? No. Besides, you know, besides the news media uh, scrutiny on any any uh, shooting incident that that uh, which and a lot of them hope for being caused right. by an armed white guy. So right. Yes. That's, right. That is correct. And then they go and blame the NRA. Right. Go figure that. Yeah. Okay. All right. I saw. The headline of the Boston newspaper after the last shooting was "Thank you NRA." I was like, "What? What's that mean?" Unbelievable. What does that mean? And people buy it. People believe this. Yeah. They drink the Kool Aid. The press, the mainstream media, is all over that politicizing. Mass murders before the bodies are even in the morgue, before they're even cold. Right, right. and yeah. the millennials are are soaking it up like sponges. But they've been 
totally you been, know academically right. brainwashed and indoctrinated. I mean, in the they, grade school for peace sake. there was some media with the the gay nightclub shooting down in Miami <clears throat> that was trying to yeah. spin it to blame Christians. I was like, <laughs> what? Yeah. I'm like, how can you? <laughs> oh. Anyway, it's okay. They got they got PTSD puppies now. Yeah. Well, it's. <laughs> Well, you know, I, you know, I got true story, true story, true story. All right. My daughter. Okay. <laughs> All right, there you go. Uh, my my daughter went to uh, uh, the community college up here before she uh, transferred to DePaul, which, by the way, is a disgusting social justice warrior program. It's like indoctrination over education. However, first I digress. <laughs> it is. I, I it, graduated it is. from there. It's unbelievable. Uh, uh, no, I, that's a whole other story. Anyways, and, and you're paying for it. <laughs> yeah, I think most colleges are turning into that. A lot of them are. It's indoctrination over education. Well, actually, is. this is very true because I, I graduated from DePaul, uh, um, and I went there during the late '90s. And yeah, even then, there was indoctrination happening over there as well. But I, I think, but but what, the sense that I'm getting is that. <clears throat> As far as magnitude goes, that indoctrination has taken up some speed to the point where, you know, it's 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 a brainwashing program for Pete's sake. It's 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 something that I don't know how to explain it. I, I don't think I can articulate it into words, but it's just something that's so prevalent now. It's almost it's almost uh, um, I want to say cancer, but it is uh, cancer. That's they're, they're, yeah. They're really dumbing down the education. It's a two-dimensional education, and they're not showing opposing points of view. So the kids are really getting a diluted education, and it's a, it's a huge disservice. It is. See, no, and that's, that's why I, I work to explain things to my son, you know, so that he has a critical thinking. I mean, he he's heard a few things. He's come home before. And he says, yeah, they were doing this around the school thing. And we're like, we had some visitors. And I'm like, really? And what happened? And I said, so what did you think about that? He's like, don't agree. <laughs> you know, he's like, good. It, good. You know. Well, oh, well yeah. I want to see you. All, all of a sudden, the professor takes it out on your grade, <laughs> on your paper. No, it's yeah, true. Yeah. It does, that does happen. The libs That's will change school. conservative students. It, you, you know what? So you should. If you can. When you leave. What, what I was saying was this. My daughter has a friend, very close friend she's grown up with. She's a screaming lib. And my daughter finally, you know, finally asked her, she says, you know, why are you after the Christians so much? Why don't you go after and protest and bitch about the Muslims? And you know what the answer was? And, it, and God love her. It was an honest answer. Her friend gave a very honest answer. She said, because we're afraid that the Muslims will become violent. And mm. I said, really? I would say. Because, because Christians won't fight back? And it was that, and she said, and my daughter said, yeah. So I said, there you go. I said, you know, maybe That's it's not for crew. It, it's very honest. And I gave her friend gold star because you know what? That's an honest yeah. answer. But Most people then, wouldn't give that answer. They you know, I bet you in your kitchen counter, I bet you in one of the drawers in your kitchen, I, or maybe in your office, but I and I bet you you got it in your glove department. But I get you. I bet you you got bags of gold stars to hand out to everybody. I do. Did your I daughter grow up stars. with like a book of gold stars or something? Do you have to lick them for them to stick? <laughs> no window liquor. <laughs> we do not. Okay. <laughs> Just no, it, it, but you know what? Maybe it's time for Christian Church. To stop being, you know, road, you know, uh, cannon fodder. There's nothing or wrong just, with militant Christianity. We've gotten away from it, so people think, well, we case in point. Let's go. You know, the LBGTQ community goes after that the Christian bakers out there in was it Washington, because they wouldn't make a cake, but they won't yeah. say a damn word about the Muslim bakery down the street who won't do it either. Maybe oh, this video is on YouTube of yeah, this video is on YouTube of people doing that, going into a Muslim bakery and sh- just showing the hypocrisy. 
And I think yeah. the Muslims, if they don't want to cook it for gay people, great. That's fine, too. I mean, it, That's people up to have them. a right not to – it's up to them. It's their business. Well, that, it comes down but to the hypocrisy. judges that we elect. The exactly. judges are well, then, the ones who are allowing this to happen and, you know, and the prosecutors that are being hired and the defense attorneys that are being hired, you know, and that's why is because they're not hiring the right people that look at the fairness and look at the overall picture across the United States or at least across that own, their own state. Hmm. Well, I think getting back to your point about um, Christians rising up, I, I, there's been – Christians like Chuck Baldwin before he passed away was talking about civil disobedience. And I think if Hillary got in, you probably would have seen Christians start to show civil disobedience. I don't think it would have been violence, but it would have been, you know, protests in the streets, um, you know, boycotting things. I don't know what else, but I think people were getting really fed up. And who knows what Trump will do? I mean, you know, let's at least start with being able to say Merry Christmas again, you know? Well, they can, they, they can still do, they can no, still do civil disobedience in the blue states, at least. You know, I mean, because they're still oh. in an area that's, that's for the most part, uh, high style, uh, high style, hostile to to mm-hmm. Christian beliefs. And and yeah. I, I think I think the churches in those blue states need to step up a little bit more to yeah, cement they, their their position, but also but also to spread the word of God as well and, and share their grace. But but they, they need to. They need, yeah, but they won't because they're afraid of, they're, they're so worried about the almighty 501c3 designation, they're afraid that somebody in their congregation will call in and report them. Well, they don't have to worry about it after January 20th, 2017, in my, in my estimate. Which, by the way, reminds me, listeners, don't think that this administration in the White House is less dangerous. It's more dangerous now, and it's being reported that... Uh, this administration's about to uh, embark on what they call the uh, scorched earth policy because they know their time is limited. They're more dangerous now than they were before the election. So uh, keep you're talking, oh, about, interesting. You're talking about Operation J-20? That's um, one of them. By the way, there's yeah. over 2 million bikers that will be uh, in Washington, D.C. to, uh, shall we say, protect the inauguration. Now, we all Great. know... Hey, it is great. And we all know that the liberals, most of them, are cowards. They will not go, mm. you know, and, unless there's a bunch of them. But then again, how many of them know how to fight? Very little of them. If, they, if it came down yeah. to violence, they would get whomped on. And rightfully well, so. They, and yeah. I won't, you know, but the thing of it is this. how We're looking at half the country has no clue how the government works. They don't yeah. have a clue on how to lose. It's okay to lose. You will survive. Yeah. You survived eight well, years. We didn't like it. Well, we everyone gets, goes, go ahead. Go this ahead. is the generation where everyone gets a trophy, so they're not, they were never shown how to lose. Right. It's, when I grew up, I played sports all the time. Sometimes we won. Sometimes we didn't. Sometimes. You know, end of the yeah. season, you know, and it's okay. It's okay to lose. Just learn from your losing. That's all. Become better That's next That's when time. you learn the most. That's when you learn the most is when you lose. That's character building. Yes. Sometimes you got sprinkles. Sometimes you didn't. That's right. <laughs> sprinkles are for winners. Um, yeah. <clears throat> my wife put me in my place this morning, so I had to apologize. Your wife put you in your place? Surrender your man cards. We don't Surrender your man cards right now. You're gonna buy, had to buy her a new purse. Terry, 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 uh, we're not going to talk anymore about this. I just thought I mentioned it. Thank you. Surrender your man card immediately. <laughs> You're suspended for three weeks. Wife put me in my place. That's okay. I know I know. <laughs> Mr. Theo has a problem with his wife. Don't judge she me. Keep, she keeps him in line. I, 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 read, I read your uh, website there. I fear no man, just one woman. <laughs> there you go. That's a <laughs> man, that's a that's a t shirt right there. I fear no man. It might be. Just one it woman. Might be. Yeah. Oh, which by the way, uh I did talk to Kirk briefly. Uh we got he's got another uh system he wants to try with the T shirts. So we're not done selling them, we're just trying to figure a way to get the shipping and the uh cost down some. So we, he thinks he might have a way. So just as an update for all the listeners, 
And for those that did purchase the T-shirts, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. This is the round table. I can talk about whatever I want. So can you. <laughs> so to, to get back to uh, the prepping within the church and church groups, okay? That's um, important. Right. I, I think that um, – I think that a lot of not not all churches are going to be open for this, but they are. You know, and, I, and I've been talking to my church about it, the pastor himself, and uh, and he he likes the idea. It's just that nobody's done anything about it. And well, and, well that's why you got to step up. If you're if you know, you've approached him on it, sit down and talk with him about it. And I, I, you know, and John, John said it right. He says, you know what? Most of them will be open if you sit down and tell, you know, tell them we're not going to be down the stairs disassembling AR-15s and how to field strip them and clean them. We will do that with the Light handguns bullet. that are brought, but not the rifles. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you know, I churches. Think- you know, I, and John's right. You know, this, some of the churches, and mine does. We have a we have built built-in commercial kitchen. And we and we do. We, do too. we 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 feed a lot of people, and we should. That's what we're supposed to do. We got the clothing, you know, the clothing. They go. They need clothing. Go in there, pick out what you need. That's what we're supposed to do. I've got no problem with that. But what happens when you know when we have the um, the rapture comes? There are going to be a lot of upset people, like Terry, because he's not going. He and I are stuck down there. Damn. What are you laughing at, John? You're going to be you're nothing, gonna be stuck down here with us. Nothing. We're all <laughs> <laughs> nothing. No, we're going to be stuck down here. And you know what? It's going to be the preppers and the concealed carry guys who go to protect the church, the church building, not the church people. The people will come to the church, especially after the rapture, looking for answers. Mm. And we've yeah. got to be there because there are some people that will burn down the church building, and that's not going to happen, at least not on my watch. The, um, well. you, you were just talking about um, doing prepping classes at church, and it made me think that there's ways to kind of ease into it, um, yeah. that you could do classes on debt control, getting rid of debt. You could do classes on water filtration, alternative medicine. Oh, um, good idea. Uh, you know, before you get to the beans, bolts, and band-aids, you could start with <laughs> easy stuff that a lot of people could get to, you know, water filtration. That's a huge one. Talk about fluoride. Talk about ways that you could filter water, GMOs, debt. So there's, there's more mainline things you could have at, at church to kind of gauge to see if there's an interest there. And um, maybe that's what I should talk to my pastor about now that I'm saying <laughs> that. Oh, speaking uh, of GMOs, um, listen to our last there's episode. Also- there, there is also one point of view that you can um, debate with to your pastor is um, this is, you know, during the times of, say, economic struggles of the times of the collapse of the, you know, say, say we have an economic collapse or whatever, just like during the Great Depression in the 20s, with, you know, there's going to be bread lines and soup mm. lines. There's going to be... Um, that's a lot true. of people that are hurting, and it yep. could be a, a a mission of the church to be ready right. to take care of those that are in need, and that in itself can be a uh, a ministry, you know, in in not just taking care of today, but what if tomorrow? That line you just said is literally in my book, White Mountains Fall Flag. The pastor and the protagonist I have talking. And they're talking about an economic downturn, and he said it could be worse, and we could end up being missionaries in our own state. So it's like a conversation they have because New Hampshire is very much driven on tourism. And as you know, in an economic downturn, one of the first things that go is trips, vacation. So literally, what you just said is is in my book, and it's discussed by a pastor and the, the protagonist. We very well could be missionaries in our neighborhood. <laughs> I love that. Go start. Go start. No, I, I should get my I should get my name mentioned in the in the book next time. The next writing of the book. Yeah. That's right. No, sorry. no, don't do that. You'll just make his ego even bigger. No, I might, forbid might it. Bring down the, I forbid might it. Bring down the sales. 
Oh, does it ever end? It never ends. <laughs> yeah, my wife's going to call me. She's going to be, who's this Terry and John? They both want royalties or something? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, You're not getting no money. Don't take that call. You you know, John, you're welcome here at the Contra Radio Network anytime you want to come in. This is not just a one-time thing. I expect you to, I expect you to return to visit and, you know, chew the fat with us and come up with some ideas. Because I tell you, you've you've had some really good ideas I didn't think about. And it goes for Terry. Terry has some good ideas. He comes up with them, but you know, sometimes I don't always catch it. So. Yes, Thank I you know. Thank for having me. Hey, you know, no. But, what, you, but I tell you, you what, that to, didn't happen last week. What, do you have to go now, John? You can stick around. We're not kicking you out. Mm. We're not going to kick you out, okay. John. You can stay. <laughs> All right. That's fine. I'll okay. stay as long as I can. Unless, unless, of course, you want to flee, you can, but we're, we're no, not kicking no. you out. I have no All place right. to go. Hey, I just Perfect. saw your um, false flag. I just saw, like saw your false flag 40-second trailer. You kicked ass. What was that, buddy? Oh, thank you. What was that? Tra- uh, he there is a second trailer for his book. Oh, very good. Yeah. All right. I, I have a YouTube channel as well, so I I created a uh, book trailer for my books. You have to be a marketing guy as well as an author these days. <laughs> you, well, yeah, I did uh, post that on the uh, CRN Facebook page when I announced oh, last you. week that we were going to do that. So I posted your YouTube, and uh, was it oh, the uh, 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 was it? Uh, Clear Reads, was that right? Clear Read? Yeah, yeah, that's the publisher. Clean right. Reads. Right. Then I then I posted that to Clean Reads. And I put I posted the link to, to your books there. So if you forget what is the title is, go to the CRN Facebook page. And I also posted a link to your personal website so we can all oh, thank see you. you. So we can all see you and laugh and say, Yeah, he's just like us. Yeah. So Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or worse. But, I'm worse. Well, you're worse. <laughs> Yeah, you know, here here at the round table we talk about a lot of different like I said, we'll start off on one subject and we will end on another. And this of That's course great. this episode hey, this episode's no no different. And you know you said you were when you were writing the book you became frustrated and you were taking a lot of the uh your storylines out of the uh media. Which media do you usually do you usually follow or pick up your ideas from? Um I I'll go to uh, WND, World Net Daily, Drudge, Infowars, Zero Hedge. Um, very rarely do I go to lamestream media. I'll sometimes just go there just to see what they're talking about. But it's you know pretty much you know not news. Um, I'll listen to Fox sometimes. Yeah, it's more just what they want you to look, be um, distracted with. Right. And, you know, I'll pull up Yahoo or whatever, and you can see all the headlines the majority of the time are left-leaning. So it's just – I'm more frustrated with the media than I am with Hillary. She never really hid what she was. Everyone knows she's no. a commie, but the media always claims they're impartial. I, they're I can't not. stand that. That bothers me more than Bernie Sanders or Hillary because they, they, they're they like – we know what she is, but they – you know. They I lull don't. people into thinking they're impartial, and they're not. It's so frustrating. It is. No, I hear you. I, I get it. I think um, you're absolutely right. With the the lamestream media, I like that. I love that. The lamestream media. Here's yeah. if you don't believe, hey listeners, trust me. Here's a little experiment you can do. Your local news comes on at you know ten o'clock or eleven o'clock or whatever. Do this. This is really easy. Go to the big go, go to the CBS affiliate, NBC affiliate, ABC affiliate. Goes affiliates, and when they start doing their opening story, click it. Watch, it's the same story, and almost yeah. word for word. So yeah. they're telling you, they're telling you, hey, look, if it bleeds, it leads. After that, yeah. they're off the, and they're not, and they're not going to tell you, hey, we're giving our opinion here. They're going to pass off their opinion as facts. You don't believe me? Yeah. Do that little experiment. You'll see it. it it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. And it's clear they're getting their talking points from some, you know, some one place. They've got to. They've got to. Nobody's that consistent. Mm-hmm. Nobody is, unless you're getting them from, you're getting your talking points exactly from, an outside, uh, influencer. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And as for Where George do you guys Soros. Get you- 
Oh, I like I like One American News. One American News. It's uh, uh Mr. John uh Beal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like Red uh, Flag. Are you on, I I can't find you on Facebook, but uh are are you uh are you linked on with the Contra Radio Network Facebook page? I'm not I'm not he sure is. if I am. Uh, he is. I'm just under John Theo. I, th- I think I am. Come on, dude. <laughs> I think I am. <laughs> well, you can well, see on – if you go to the Contra Radio Network fa- Facebook page, you can see that I – and they have the part about saying my guest tonight on CRN is right. John Theo Jr. Um, right. I post That's I post like. Uh, yeah. So if you would be so kind to throw me a Facebook request, I'd appreciate that. All right. That'd be the fastest, easiest way. Well, we'll we'll get them taken care. Of. We'll give them some more followers. Besides, sure. we like the way we we like the way he thinks. Hey Terry, check out try try punching in uh, John Theo Jr. See if that does it for you. Uh, that's exactly what I did. Okay, never mind. Maybe try it without the junior. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, look at White Mountain's false flag. Is it there? Is it there, Chuck? I'm so well, bad at technology. Uh huh. Unless Facebook decided to sit there and decide that you, sir, are a fake news site. That's right. That's Zuckerberg. <laughs> there you go. I, uh, I have an article. That I was interested to read. Something that I put on uh, my Facebook page is the the country prepper. And um, you this article on? is uh, it's thirteen things mentally strong people don't do. Because when when the shit hits a fan, you know, when when a tough what is it when the going gets tough, the tough get going, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's a lot of things that you should do, but there's what about the things that you should not do? Um, Panic in this art in this article on the country prepper. Um, it's done by uh, businessinsider.com, and mental strength is isn't always reflecting in what you do. It's usually seen in what you don't do, and. Oh. Um, it's all, this is book is it's written off a the article is written off a book that is thirteen things mentally strong people don't do by Amy Moron and she writes that developing mental strength is a, a three pronged approach. It's about your controlling your your thoughts, your behaviors, and your emotions. And um, one of the greatest things like I was in the infantry. And I and I've been through uh, uh, went to Ranger School. I've seen people in SFAS. I've seen guys go through um, a lot of different training. And you can look like you're a big studly guy. I mean, you're you look like you're a Rambo um, kind of guy. You can do anything. You're a stud. But then I know I've seen guys quit be- because. And I'm not just talking about fail. I'm talking about quit because they're tired or because they're hungry or mm. they just don't want to mm. deal with it anymore. Mm. You know? Mm. And I'm like, well, what did you expect? <laughs> this didn't, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Um, the first thing is they, they don't waste time feeling sorry for themselves, right? Feeling sorry for yourself is self-destructive. All right, and indulging in self pity hinders living a full life, and it wastes time that creates negative emotions, and it hurts your relationships. The key, the key is to affirm the good in the world, and you will begin to appreciate what you have, and not what you don't have. The second one is they don't give away their power. And one of their examples is Oprah Winfrey, right, as a strong grip of her own power. Uh, People give away their power when they lack physical and emotional boundaries. 
you need to stand up for yourself and draw the line when necessary. If other people are in control of your actions, they define your success and their self-worth. It's important that you keep track of your goals and work towards them. And she's, uh, Morin uses Oprah Winfrey as an example of someone with a strong grip of their own power. She grew up dealing with poverty and sexual abuse, but she chose to define who she was going to be in life by not giving away her power. Hmm. The, the third one is they don't shy away from a change. Okay. There are five stages in change. Pre contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, <laughs> and maintenance. Okay. Following through with each of the five steps is crucial. Making changes can be frightening, but shying away from them prevents growth. The, the longer you wait, the harder it is, she says. The other people will outgrow you. Because, and as preppers, we, we'll, we must definitely accept that. Because the way that your life is today is not going to be the same if we have an EMP attack, it takes out all electricity. It will not be the same if we have a widespread economic collapse. It will not be the same if a hurricane comes out and destroys your state. So, you know, if you cannot adapt and, and overcome, if you cannot accept the change that's coming, you know, you're, you're just denying yourself. Kind of like the discussion we had with some churches. They don't focus on things that you can't that they can't control. It feels so safe to have everything under under control, but thinking we have the power to always pull the strings can become problematic. Trying to be in control of everything is likely a response to anxiety. Rather than mm-hmm. focusing on managing your anxiety, you try to you try controlling your environment. Shifting your focus off of things you can't control can create increased happiness, less stress, better relationships, new opportunities, and more success. You know this is a two-hour show, right? Mm Mm-hmm. All right, I'll do this a little faster. I'll do this faster. Okay. Don't worry about bleeding. That was to Terry. No one else. (laughs) So, Terry, your point is... Terry, the point is, if the zombie apocalypse happens, you want Oprah in the foxhole with you. He does. Is that, is that what you're saying? He does. Because she's really big, and she can feed you for like two or three months. Oh. And she can shoot an AR. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, it's okay. So I, I like one. it. <laughs> I can take the punch. Uh, the fifth one is they don't worry about pleasing everyone. Pretty self-explanatory. All right, so you, you just can't do it. it. Otherwise, you're just going to be disappointed when, because just like every president, there are no perfect presidents, and no matter right. what you do, there's you just can't get 100% of all the votes. They don't fear taking calculated risks, all right? People are often afraid to take the risks, whether it's financial, physical, emotional, social, or business-related. But it often comes down to knowledge. A lack of knowledge about how to calculate risk leads to increased fear, right? And, you know, like what are the potential costs? What are the potential benefits? How will this help me achieve my goals? What are other alternatives, okay? Um, The seventh one is they don't dwell on the past. And the, the past is the past. And there's no way to change what happened. And it could be self-destructive, preventing you from enjoying the present and planning for the future. In a nutshell. They don't make the same mistakes over and over. And I am constantly trying to – I've got a, seven, a teenager here, and I'm constantly trying to beat into his head the things that I've learned so that he doesn't make the same mistakes and – that he needs to learn from his own mistakes that he makes. You know, I said, we've been over this. you got to stop, you know, letting these things happen to you. All right? You're in control. 
So fix it. And I put it on them. You fix it. Great. And um, number nine, they don't resent other people's success. One of, like my grandfather taught me, don't be jealous that another man made more money than you. Be happy for him and figure out how can I make money like that too. So, you know, just because he, he did it, you, you need to study people on what they did right and what they did wrong. So learn from their success and don't don't resent it. Don't be jealous. Um they don't get number ten was they don't give up after their first failure. Um, here are their excuses. Um, Dr. Seuss, he was rejected by twenty publishers, and Dr. Seuss is now a household name because somebody finally took him on and published his books. Um, I can top I can top Dr. Seuss with twenty. I, I, I mean, I was at forty at least. <coughs> Yeah, and that's okay. You know, of course, after a while, you're like, geez, I'm running out of people I can submit to. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So um, number 11 is they don't fear alone time. You know, just because you're alone or just because there's no one around you, does does that really mean that you're alone? Do you – creating time to be alone – with your thoughts can be a powerful experience, uh, instrumental in helping with reaching your goals. Becoming mentally strong requires you to take time away from your business of daily life and focus on your growth. And um, number 12, they don't feel the world owes them anything. And what? that is, yeah, that's that's where it hits so home for a lot of us. Uh, all the millennials. Uh, what? Yeah, that's. Yeah. That knocked them out. They probably just say, well, they're wrong. I mean, it's easy to get angry at the world for your failures or lack of success, but the truth is no one is entitled to anything. It must be what? earned. What? What? Oh. Wait, wait a minute. That's oh. not fair. Well, that's not fair, <laughs> yeah. Isn't that right? Everybody oh. grab their, <laughs> everybody oh. grab their PTSD Play-Doh? puppies. Their therapy puppy and listen to the article. Now, um, number thirteen, they don't expect immediate results. A willingness to develop realistic expectations and an understanding that success doesn't happen overnight is necessary if you want to reach your full potential. You know, um, a lot of these are good. A lot of these good are not just for uh, preppers or anybody. Um, that's dealing with a hard time, but it's also good for business. It's also mm-hmm. good for um, for your your personal inner happiness on a daily basis. So, um, whether if if you're a, a leader of a group or just simply the head of the household, so I, I think that was pretty good. There's there's a lot of things that people need to take account on. Don't stress it. Absolutely. What was the hey, thing about not in the past? Yeah, don't don't um, you know what what has happened in the past has already happened. Don't dwell on it so much that it will hinder you from moving on <clears throat> and being successful. Now that doesn't mean that you don't learn from history. It just means that you don't dwell on it so much um, that you can't move on. Hold on, I gotta see if my my wife's still awake. I gotta tell her that. Hey, uh, so yeah, that's a good one for my wife. No I'm kidding. Yeah, you're gonna get it later. <laughs> She's a good. I have a great wife. My wife is a good sport. That's good. Uh, that's good. Well, that's a great really job. Well, you know, we only got about 15 minutes to go, so anyways. Closing comments? Sure, let's do closing comments. But first, John CEO gets to do closing comments. John, you can say whatever you want to the world. Our show goes all over the planet. What is it you would like to say to the planet? Well, on closing comments, I have two passages I'd like to read. 
Let's One is uh, from Ezekiel. It says, uh-huh. uh, but if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at the watchman's hand. And one final one is Proverbs twenty one thirty one. The horse, this is a different one. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. So the whole point is everything, you know, no matter how many preps you have, you need to have that spiritual uh, prep with God. Oh, good. In my opinion. I like that one. Mm-hmm. And buy oh, my good. book. Buy Theo Jr.'s book. Uh, i got links on the CRN Facebook page. I know uh, a lot of you have been looking it up while you've been listening, and some of you will look it up while you're driving your car listening to this podcast. I know you are. And so just be careful when you're doing it. I, all right. I want to say thank you to John Theo for being such a good sport and hanging out with us here on the round table report. Hey, you are welcome My back any time. Pleasure. You can call in anytime you want. We do live shows on Wednesday and Sunday nights. And then we have a, a show for on Saturday nights for women preppers. That's the ladies of the watch with Julie. Oh yeah. We don't, we, we like to try to get everybody involved. And then we got a new show coming up probably at the end of the month with Brian Kisler. His his new show is called uh, New Mexico West Prepping. And we're working to get mm. that going. And he'll be on Tuesday nights. Now, if you have like a uh, mechanical concern, like solar panels or GMO seeds versus heirloom, whatnot, Brian's your guy. He's lived off grid. He's going to go live off grid again. He lived off grid in West Texas, and he's going to go live off grid in New Mexico. He likes it a lot. And plus, he's the only guy I've ever known that's decided to chuck everything and said, I'm living off grid. And his wife says, That's cool. Yeah, I like it. Let's do it. And they do it. So that's yeah, his, show, his show will be at the end of the month. So make sure you get John's book. And if his sales are good enough, we can goad him into uh, writing a sequel. And it, it's available on Kindle too, right? As an ebook? Yes. Yes, I, it is, or it's about to be. Yes. Okay, there you go. Ebooks are even better. Take them with you. Yeah. It's the publish. My publisher. I have a great publisher, Clean Reads Press. Um, they do first runs on ebooks only, and then they like the second run. They'll put it into print because they want to recoup as much of the investment as possible. Uh, oh yeah. So the the industry is going with ebooks as much as those of us who like paperback, but that's. Mm-hmm. Publisher's prerogative, but it's a great publisher. Okay, very good. It is true. Oh, by the way, Terry, I did find John's Facebook page. You're incompetent. You can't find it. You'll be punished later. (laughs) 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 I'm already friends with him. It wasn't hard finding his his page. What what is it with you? (laughs) Well, I typed it in, and it didn't show up. Well, you know, that was a that was a rhetorical question. This is a two hour show. We don't have time to talk about all your problems. <laughs> I'm a therapy puppy. <laughs> therapy puppy, where are you? Chuck, you got final say. Go. Okay. Well, simply because something has not ever happened before does not mean that it won't happen. Right. It does not mean it is unthinkable. Anything is possible. As for those who uh, ha- had to endure Hurricane Irene, Hurricane Sandy, um, Hurricane Andrew, and, and, you know, the list goes on and on and on. The whole purpose of prepping is basically to uh, to put aside additional uh, food and water provisions, first aid, medicine, uh, and you know what, even... Uh, you know, batteries, lights, uh, and even for defense, you know, even even uh, weapons. Because when something happens on the scale of Irene or or Sandy or heaven forbid Katrina, there, you know, first responders are not going to call are not going to arrive at your hospital and you dial nine one one. Hospitals will probably not be uh, uh, open, or or they'll be overflowed with patients and they'll have no room for you. Grocery stores will not have any food. Um, and there may or may not be any utility in your home, so you won't be able to keep your food cold. The whole purpose of provision and, and or prepping in general is to be as an insurance policy. The idea is to have these things when you need it, but hopefully you won't need to use it, like, like, a, like a portable generator. 
but the same concept applies to prepping. Regardless of what the uh, danger is or what the event is, prepping is all the same. It's all about provisions, medicines, um, and, and, and having a little put aside for you that can last you a few days or a few weeks or a few months uh, according to what you're able to afford. So I definitely encourage any adult, especially with children, to consider uh, prepping uh, for, if not for themselves, definitely for their family. And the best place to, and you know what, here's the thing, no man is an island. And uh, the idea of a family against the entire world is something that is, is unfavorable or unpalatable even to me. But the best place to go uh, to being in a community, uh, probably the best in institution in the world that, that, that helps sustain the concept of community is your local church. They have Absolutely. the food pantry there. They have yeah. the food pantry there. They have the 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 uh, presents, uh, toys for tots, and you know uh, the yeah. the church is basically where community comes from. And with that being said, I leave you with uh, a, a few quotes from my favorite scripture, Colossians eighteen twenty and twenty one. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands, as is fitting to in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives. Do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children, or they will become discouraged. And maybe 22, although it says slaves and masters, you can basically apply this to employers and employees as well. Mm -hmm. Obey your earthly, and I'm going to to change the words around. Obey your earthly employers in everything, and do it not when they're not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human employers, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. And I conclude my closing statement. Thank you. Very good. Hey, uh, I got I got a quick question for all for, for all three of you, and that is this: How many of you, when you go to church, how many of you take notes during the service during the sermon? I do. Does anyone else do that? Ooh. I have a I photographic do. memory. Oh please, addled mind. It's called a smartphone. Uh, okay, but, I'll sometimes jot down passages if they jump out at me. Um, yeah. But I don't really go, go in with a notebook. Now that oh, I, I do. I, now that he says that, I feel I feel guilty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good point. The reason the, the reason I ask is this, and, and and I thought about it when Chuck was talking about your provisions. Do this, you know, if you wish. For me, spiritual. I, uh, since I retired, I've become much more spiritual, and 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 as my daughter would say, Dad. You've got a softer heart now. I said, well, that's because I don't have to put up with the same crap that I was before. And, and this is this. Put a Bible in your preps. When you fill up your notebook, put it in there with your Bible. Because there will come a time when we're going to need that. And we're going to need to look back on our notes and what we've learned, what struck us at that time at that particular sermon. I mean, I, I do that. Great. But that's it's just for me. I I just wanted to share it with you. I think um, yeah. I don't think Chuck gets a, his man card back for trying to you know. He he's still suspended for three weeks. So <laughs> yes, you you are. All right, Mr. Terry, Terry. Mr. Terry, do you have final words? Yeah, I like to say uh, first. I hate to take a moment to say last week when I was in deer camp <laughs> during my short time on the radio, um, I was a bit under the uh, influence of. No, uh, no. Yeah, I, I, was, I was more than just a bit under the influence of some uh, 120 proof uh, moonshine. And um, you did, I was you, listening you to the program with a friend of mine. And I said, "Here's a uh, here's a little thing I did for gutting a deer and sk- gutting and skinning a deer. What do you think?" And I was like, "Oh man, do I really sound like that?" He goes, "When you're drinking, yeah." <laughs> oh yeah, but it, it wasn't hard to tell. It's <laughs> well, okay. I, Look, I like to you publicly were, you apologize for my unprofessionalism, 
if wow. there is any here on CRN. And, oh. um, you know. What? What? So, what? 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 <laughs> <laughs> you will be punished, sir. I'm going to ask the Lord to punish you harshly now. I was going to forgive you, but forget it now. I was demoted <laughs> a gold star. Damn, I've got to take it away. You get no gold star. I want my man card back. Oh, no, <laughs> denied. Your request is denied. We submit 90 days for further denial. I'll be back next week. <laughs> All right, buddy. All Anyways, right. Uh, I, I think that I think that the one big thing we could take from this um, episode is that when we're prepping, we keep things in perspective, and we don't Absolutely. forget the higher powers that that are um, our, our Lord and Jesus Christ. That, Amen. Um, we don't yeah. we don't prep yeah. in fear, and one of the largest, uh, the most common phrase in the Bible is "fear not." So right. um, don't don't forget, the Lord is still on your side, mm-hmm. but you also need to. Uh, he also helps. They say God helps those who help themselves. And you need to take care of your own business. So there, there you go. All right, all right. Now for all my prepper and patriot friends, especially those on the southern border. I just posted a, uh, a news article. I just came across the uh, site. Check it out on the CRN Facebook page. I want you on the southern border to be really careful. And for the rest of you prepper and patriot friends of mine that listen to CRN, I have this to say to you. Be safe, be alert, and be vigilant. I'd like to thank my guest tonight, John Theo, for coming in and putting up with us and having a good time. And I thank want you, you all to have a – hey, it's, it was a lot of fun, and I want you to come back again. I really enjoyed our, our time thank together. You. Thank you. And I want to say happy Thanksgiving to all. Remember, tomorrow when you're stuffing your fat pie holes – Take a moment to praise God that you got something to eat. It's not about football, people. All right. So with that said, I say good night. I say thank you again for listening to the Contrario Network. I'm John Jeffers. Saying good night. We'll be back again Saturday night for Ladies of the Watch with Julie at 8 o'clock. And um, Sunday night, 8 o'clock, Contrario Network. Good night. Good night. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you could save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your mood. This Thursday through Saturday at Kohl's, it's time to spread the holiday cheer. So whip up some cookies with a KitchenAid Artisan Stand Mixer, just $2.99.99 after mail-in rebate. Save the world with Mr. Potato Head Marvel Super Heroes for $29.99. And make her eyes light up with a Swarovski ring, just $21.99. At Kohl's, you'll save a little more with an extra 20% off and earn a little more with Kohl's Cash. So you can give a little more this holiday. Kohl's. Select styles offer valid 12-1 through 12-5. Some exclusions apply. See store or kohls.com for details.